Hello, audience. Uh, as I understood, I speak for the University of Parma. Uh, sorry, I could not do this in live because I would always prefer that, of course. But hey, those are the circumstances right now. Marco, thank you for inviting me. I would love to speak to you about a couple of minutes on innovation. I say a couple of minutes because Marco asked me to keep it short. Uh, innovation is a terribly interesting subject. Also, unfortunately, a lot of time uh, not really understood. Um, what I'm going to speak to you today about is performance of innovation. Uh, can you measure that? And if you can, how to measure that? And if you cannot, how to control it? Uh, and Mark also asked me uh, and put to my heart, said, please don't forget to introduce yourself. So that would be my first thing. I will introduce myself right now. Who am I? I'm Steph Kuipers, age 43, although you would not say. Uh, my professional, professional uh, education background is a Bachelor in Economics. I hold a post-Bachelor in Finance and Control. And finally, I also had uh, the pleasure of doing Executive and Master in Finance and Control, where I did my uh, thesis on the performance of innovation. And more specifically, on the performance of innovation, and the difference between the ownerships of a com uh, company. So whether or not you are governmentally owned or if you are a super national nat uh, organization or if you are publicly listed or privately owned, then those are real differences uh, between organizations and they all have their influence on innovation and how it performs. A little bit about my professional experience. Uh, I was a CPA within KPMG for a couple of years, a financial consultant for the University of Maastricht, assistant controller and a project controller in uh, BAM, which is uh, a utility uh, construction uh, agency. So like big projects like hospital, uh, hospitals, universities, those kind of things. Uh, after that, I went to work for a seed company for seed enhancement. Um, all nationally, no GMO, um, where I now hold the position of strategic controller of a certain crop groups, the cucurbits. Now, some personal information, my personal likes are sports. I like to cook. I already have my girlfriend uh, for 24 years, which I still love. I like to work and stay busy and also find challenges and of course also overcome them. And last but not least, I'm also one of the co-founders of Signpost Foundation. Uh, most probably uh, Marco has already told you about that, or otherwise he will. Uh, where I also hold the position currently of head of finance uh, of the, the foundation itself and the board. Now, first to tell you something about innovation, because it's, it's good to know about innovation and its background in order to also take this whole story uh, more into consideration. And so let's see, what is innovation? Well, if you look into literature or different articles, there are lots of definitions. Uh, so you have the uh, definition of Berkham in 2010, for instance, you have uh, those very simplistic one of Rogers in 1960. So out of all those definitions, I choose to uh, have my own where I say, you know, innovation is the process of developing and possibly implementing, implementing new or original ideas on positioning, process, processes, techniques, and products which have the potential to benefit the organization and its ecosystem. Well, already said, there are a lot of different definitions, but there is also a lot of different ways to look at innovation. So the different kinds of innovation. So you have product innovation, for instance. And so changes in the product and or services, which an often organization can offer. You have process innovation. And so those are the changes in the way in which products and or services are created or delivered. You have positioning innovation. And so changes in the context in which the products and all the services, of course, are marketed, for instance, and here you have a, a beautiful example is Levi. Uh, Levi's in the beginning when it started was still a worker's jeans. 
how, how they position themselves right now is as a fashion item. So that is a big position innovation. Now, another kind of innovation is paradigm innovation. And so those are the changes in the underlying mental models which shape what is all the, the organization does. And so there's a mental conditioning. So for instance, from history, you buy a bread and that's kind of a physical process. Uh, you're going to the supermarket or the bakery. The paradigm innovation would be if you get people to buy your bread online. And so that's more or less uh, all the different kinds of innovation. And then of course you have the, the levels of innovation. So you have incremental innovation with builds on a product that is already this existing. And on the other hand, you have disruptive innovation, which can is a new product or services totally can change the market. And I think also important to realize is that innovation happens throughout the entire organization. And so often people say, yeah, we do a lot of innovation and we have huge R&D. R&D is innovation. R&D is not innovation. R&D is a part of innovation. So that's the first misconception. Now, how to measure the performance of innovation you are? And guess what? You can't. How you measure uh, your process innovation, for instance? A company is constantly changing. So how to measure that and to put a stamp on it, I'm doing good or not good, is extremely difficult because a lot of innovation, you don't even record that they are happening, but they do. And they help your company or your organization forward. Uh, but you don't need to worry, uh, but you can control it because we want to control everything, of course. You can control it even without killing it. Uh, I, I wish I had more time to speak to you, but a lot of the companies, they treat innovation just like a normal organizational process, like you're doing business. Innovation is a completely different animal. And you cannot treat innovation like that because then you kill it. And the same way it goes for controlling it. And that sounds strange coming from a controller, but some things you need to really uh, put in balance to the way that you control it. And one of those things is innovation. You cannot treat it like a normal business, which you would control with all kinds of controls and take all the levels of controls, for instance, uh, from Simons. Um, if you put hard controls on innovation, especially on front end, you would kill it immediately. Uh, but you can control it. And the way to do that is you can measure the optimal circumstances in which innovation thrives. Uh, what are the circumstances that influence innovation? I will come back to that later on. Oh yeah, uh, one other thing, and that is, and this is also one of the misconceptions of innovation, and this is quite provocative. Money cannot buy you innovation performance. I already described in literature uh, by Jurelski and Dijov in 2008, they describe the companies that are considered the most in innovative outperform the market uh, by 10.6. Companies that spend the most on R&D outperform the market by 1.6. And this is all in a time span of 10 years. Uh, but here you can see that the correlation between throwing money at it and innovation itself is not there. Uh, companies and organizations that are work, they always say, uh, we have too little money for innovation. Uh, and yes, you need money and you need budget. But it doesn't mean that you throw money at it, that your innovation performance goes up. Misconception, really misconception. Now, uh, like I said, you can control innovation, but how you can control it is by measuring the influencing factors. So first we have to look, okay, what is now described also in literature? What are the influencing factors of innovation? Well, the main one, is culture. And uh, Denison 2013, Philip Besson 2009, and they all say considering to be the strongest influencing factor, 
on innovation as culture. And, and this sounds pretty trivial, but you need to allow the unexpected to happen. Uh, promote curiosity, experimentation, risk taking, and also important, tolerate mistakes. Freedom for employee, consistently also free of budget. And we just saw that throwing money at innovation doesn't mean that your performance goes up, but we also know that money makes the world go round and you cannot do without any budget, but it needs to be consistent. And you cannot say here, uh, uh, I have some budget left, I will do innovation. And then, then the next year you don't have it. This needs to be consistent. Now, another thing that influence is organizational planning. Uh, what is meant here is that you need to encourage to think in an unusual and creative way. Uh, clear vision and strategy is important. Uh, and this also needs to be communicated uh, internally, but also externally. Uh, internally, it's also important that if you have a clear vision on, uh, and a strategy on innovation, you communicate that to your human capital, because they are the base for your innovation. Another thing that is quite important also in the organization climate is you need to split it. You need to split innovation in front end and development. They both need completely different ways of handling. Uh, for the development part, yes, you need controls. Otherwise, you, it becomes chaotic. In the front end, you need as less controls as possible. And to boost so there also the creativity in the end, that's also one of the starting points for your innovation. Now, last but certainly not least is leadership. And they need to live the innovation culture and drive the innovation climate. And like they used to say, walk the walk, walk the talk. And what they also need to foster is to embrace the differences in people and connect the dots among those differences. Uh, if you have the same team, they all think the same and you will never come to new things. Another thing is they need to break through myopic and silo thinking. Myopic is short term oriented. Innovation is for the long run. In the end, you will become better by that. And, and what's also important is to link your innovation strategy back to your organizational strategy. Those are not separate things. Well, talking about all these things that influence innovation, and this also brings me uh, back to the statement first, you cannot measure innovation, but you can control it and you can you can measure how all those different influencing factors are uh, perceived within your organization. Uh, culture, uh, you can ask yourself, okay, what is the culture in my organization? Does that really foster innovation? Does it really create the right circumstances to boost my innovation performance? The same goes with leadership. The same goes with organizational climate. Those are things that you can really measure. Uh, so there is a developed, we developed a model uh, that could be of huge help for that. Uh, what we basically did is we divided in four quadrants. Uh, three of them are directly linked to what we saw before, are the things that really influence organization, culture, organization climate, leadership. Uh, and each of those the subjects and influencing factors, you can assess by their ease also have their commonalities and their characteristics and that you can measure and that you can map out. Uh, the other thing, the fourth quadrant is really the outcome measurements. Uh, I said in the beginning, you cannot measure innovation, not all of it. Uh, how to measure, for instance, paradigm innovation or process innovation or positioning. But what you can do measure is, for instance, product innovation. And that is your fourth quadrant. And so, like I said, each of those quadrants, there are 10 com uh, components per quadrants to assess its strength. And that strength you map out. And if you've done that, the total surface of the spider web 
determines your innovation power as an organization. Uh, but what that also does, it really points out the areas where you have to make improvement in that specific quadrant. And like you can see here on the slide is I here I put three organizations over each other. And if you really look into the details a little bit small, I cannot help that, sorry. It uh, would be uh, that in this case, uh, the, the, the subject of measurements, for instance, the organization, the governmental organization is performing the best on innovation. And in this case, it was a university. And, but you can also see where other types of organizations are better. So it makes themselves comparable. And so the comparable uh, is possible here. And you can do that also between different departments in your own organization. And perhaps uh, marketing and sales, if you do the measurement there, is much more has a higher innovation power even than R&D at certain areas. And here you can learn from each other. And so within your organization, but also between organizations. Learn and improve. Well, I'm afraid <laughs> I'm already a little bit over time. Like said, I would love to speak to you in live and for a longer time because there are numerous of other things that I need to mention about innovation and how to measure that. But I hope you enjoyed this short intermezzo and I wish you a lot of pleasure uh, for the continuation of this presentation with Marco. I hope to see you soon, guys. Bye.